The new HDR histogram in Lightroom is an amazing way to learn more about what's actually inside your RAW files, even if you don't have HDR support. I'm recording on an SDR or standard dynamic range monitor. I don't have any HDR or high dynamic range support, so the entire range here is showing in red because I cannot see these pixels. I want to compare a couple of exposures. I have one taken at one tenth of a second, where it looks like I can see some good cloud detail, and I can still see some good shadow detail. By comparison, I have this exposure, which is shot at four tenths of a second, or two stops brighter, and it looks brighter than it needs to be. It looks like my sky might have blown out. It's totally white. I don't see any detail here. And the SDR histogram is looking very much bunched up on the right-hand side. But I'm not actually getting a clipping warning, so that's kind of a good sign. And traditionally, we might say, well, what if we try and bring down the highlights? we will start to see some detail. And what if we bring down the exposure? Well, if you do that, you'd say, great, I just recovered the highlights. But we haven't recovered anything. We just simply made it visible. Let's take a look at this another way. Let's go zero things back out and try again. But this time, let's turn on the HDR mode. So when we've done that, you can see that the data is up above the level that my monitor can show because it's all up in the red. So I can't see it right now, but that's the actual data. And there's no cliff. There's no point where I have a sharp edge in this data, which suggests to me that the data is fine, the raw is fine, but it's simply too bright to show on the limits of my monitor. So if I go bring down the highlights, notice that a lot of that data moved in range and I'm starting to see things on the monitor. And if I bring down the exposure, by the time I bring all that data back in range, it's fully visible on my monitor. So when we make adjustments like bringing down the exposure and highlights, we're not recovering highlights in the sense that they've ever been lost. They always existed in the raw file. What we did is we brought them down from a range that was beyond the limits of our monitor and brought it down within the capabilities of our monitor. So if you have a new HDR display, you can see it properly without making these adjustments. But the important thing is that the data is in the raw file and there's a way to process it out, whether or not you want to work on an HDR monitor or make a standard print or whatever you want to do, the data is fine. Let's take a look at this one more quick time here. We kind of zero out the sliders and just watch the HDR data here. If I just move the exposure slider, you just see how we're just bringing that data in. That's all we're doing. We're just taking undisplayable data and making it visible. Now let's compare this to an image that's actually blown out. So in this third exposure, you can see that I don't have an obvious spike on the far right side, but if I look at the clipping warning, Lightroom is trying to tell me that things are blown out. And if I try and quote, recover the highlights by bringing down the exposure slider, things never look good. The sun is truly blown out here. What if we go and look at that with the HDR mode on? So now we can see that histogram. You see that there's a lot of HDR data and we can't view it here because we're on an SDR monitor, but a lot of this would look very beautiful on an HDR monitor if we had access to see it. But notice the far right side of the HDR histogram has this spike here, and that's a problem. We shouldn't see that. That is indicative of some clipping that's occurring here. And if we go and bring down our exposure until we bring that in range, you see what we've done is we took the data, some of which was outside the range of our monitor and brought it in range, and some of which was actually clipped in the original RAW file. So this spike still exists here in the SDR range because the raw file itself was damaged. It was overexposed and there's no way to quote recover it because it was always bad data, even from the get-go. Now you won't always see a spike like this. You know, in this case, we have enough pixels that it shows up, but that illustrates the point of how this works when you have actual data that's damaged in your raw file versus acceptable. Bear in mind that what we're looking at here is a histogram, not of the raw data, but a histogram of the processed version of the image. So as we make changes, this histogram updates. So we're never looking directly at the raw data, but with the HDR histogram, we're getting a better view of the capabilities of our data. If you want to see a true raw histogram, then I recommend taking a look at a program called Raw Digger, which will display the actual data of your raw file. And that's another way you can go even deeper on this. But let's come back to the HDR histogram in Lightroom and I want to illustrate one other point here. So coming back to our original image, and we just kind of compare our exposures here with our brighter exposure, which initially looked like it was maybe overblown, but of course we can bring things back in range. And if we compare this to our darker exposure, there's a couple things that are telltale about this image being underexposed. One, there is of course a gap here, but that gap would close quite a bit if I shot say one stop brighter. How do I know that I'm really underexposed here? 
Well, in the HDR history, I've noticed that there's just nothing in the HDR range. And generally speaking on most cameras that are at least down at like base ISO, you should probably be able to get up to about three or three and a half stops of HDR content before things start to clip. So if you turn on the HDR mode and it's pretty empty or there's only maybe like one stop of content, that's a pretty good sign that you could have bumped up your exposure at the time you originally shot it and pushed the pixels up into a brighter range and then in post-processing, bring them back if you had to. But the lack of any data in the upper range of the camera here is gonna mean that your shadows are gonna be noisier than they need to be. That's not to say you should have shot brighter because maybe you want the water to be at a certain shutter speed, but at least you're better informed on whether or not you're at risk of having some noise in your images. Now to learn more about the new HDR mode in Lightroom, click to this next video.